Hey guys, this is a rerun of 6 Warrior Quest Area 7 in DFF 00 Global. This run showcases a very broken party combo of Beatrix, Quina, and Rubicante because this party ignores every single aura or mechanic on this stage. And on top of that, you don't need anyone from party 2 to step in. This is really only going to be a one party run. I'm not even going to touch the swap party member button at all. I don't even think you need any ultimate weapon for this team to get going. Everyone here does have a 505 ultimate weapon but I sort of finished the fight with like 7 turns of force time remaining so there's a whole lot of leeway to get this run going. First things first, in terms of setup, you want the order of the party members as such. Beatrix followed by Quina followed by Ruby Kante and you want sort of like a reverse starting turn order so Ruby Kante starting first. I had Ruby Kante use the Seymour call to remove the first blue aura but on hindsight I don't even think you need to. The only reason I did that is to delay the bosses so that both Quina and Beatrix can act and complete the setup before the bosses get their first turn. Also in terms of setup, you want to remove everyone's speed passives. These are simply passives with the word speed in them in the character screen. If you see any such passives, just unequip all of them. Because the slower your party is, the better it is. At the start of the fight, in terms of setup, it's really just spamming Absorb Blizzard with Ruby Kante to charge up the force gauge. And I also enter into his BT mode here to help freeze the enemy's force gauge while, while I continue charging mine. I do have two consecutive turns with both Ruby Kante and Quina because I have their green and black U2 crystal passives equipped. If you don't have it, you can probably still do the run. You just have to do some minor adjustments along the way, but it isn't very impactful. The idea is just use Absorb Blizzard to charge up the Force Gauge, use BT Mode to charge up the Force Gauge, and then when you finally get done with Ruby Kante's turn, which I'm about to come to, Quina starts its turn with the Choco Summon already half charged. Here use the Reigns LD call to help charge the rest of the Choco Summon. I would recommend to consider saving the base call just in case if for, for whatever reason you need to dispel the Fire Dog Aura later in the fight. You can use the Reigns base call to launch the Assault Dog to remove the Fire Aura. The evasion that the Assault Dog grants doesn't matter because all three party members are magical in nature anyway so the physical evasion doesn't matter. The fire aura does grant debuff evasion and that matters a little bit because both Beatrix and Quina have relevant debuffs they'd like to stick. The easy way to get around that is to simply just apply their debuffs before you enter into force time. So just use one Quina LD and use one Beatrix LD to refresh their debuffs and then simply enter force time and you're good to go. The bosses melt extremely quickly in your force time that you don't even need to refresh the debuffs. But like I said, if you do for some reason need to refresh debuffs, all you have to do is use the rain space call on the assault dog to dispel the fire. And once it's gone, you can reapply debuffs before the assault dog triggers the fire aura again. I use Luna Freya LD call on Beatrix mainly to actually just waste the rest of the summon turns. You don't need so many turns in summon mode. I only popped summon so that I can guarantee winning the force gauge race. But having the Luna Freya call on Beatrix helps a little bit also because it allows you to squeeze in her EX, LD and Thunder Slash to you know refresh all the buffs and debuffs in one turn. Ruby Kante gets a turn here. I would actually recommend to enter force time here 
because if you're not careful you might end up with the enemies entering their force time and surprisingly it got pretty close here for some reason that last attack charged like almost 20% of their force gauge anyway it's time to enter force time if you get this far with this party then the rest of the fight is a joke all you really do is spam echoes and the boss dies pretty quickly before I started to use my echoes I still have PT plus to use so don't forget especially Quina's PT plus is quite key because during the course of the fight the bosses have insanely high defense and in the later parts of the fight you actually be hitting for one brave damage so Quina's PT aura is essential to guarantee maximum HP damage output during your turn on hindsight I actually think from this point on you can just make do with auto class the actual attack that you do I don't think really matters too much because the main form of damage comes from the often counters from Beatrix and Rubicante as well as Quina's traps just a reminder if you do find that you need to reapply Quina's traps or Beatrix's rose petals all you have to do is use the rain space call on the assault dog to dispel the fire aura once that's gone you can quickly reapply debuffs The reason why I went for Cook here instead of Echoes is simply because the blue aura on the steam count isn't up yet. Quina's Echoes rebreaks and therefore delays all enemies by one turn and optimally I think it's probably better to save the Echoes when the steam count blue aura is up. This way the enemies won't get delayed by Quina's Force Echoes. That being said, the difference is very minimal and in a fight like this it hardly matters the outcome is still pretty much a guaranteed win at this point if you still have the ticket mission left to do i think this is one great way to get it done all you have to do is stick quistis in party number two and you get the mission requirement for the ticket mission done just like this additionally if you are worried about losing the force gauge race and if you have cloud of darkness you can put Cloud of Darkness in party number 2 and bring her in to cancel the enemy's force time when, when they enter into their force time. That would be a good backup option but as you can see on this run it's not even needed. As long as you plan the setup correctly it is very easy to win the force gauge race especially by using Rubikante's PT mode as well as the Chocobo summon.
And that's it. As always, I hope the video has been helpful. And if you enjoyed the content, do leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps a lot. Till then, I'll see you guys in the next Six Warrior Quest fight. Bye!